Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I am going to show how we can deploy a .NET 5 microservice in AWS using ACS or Elastic Container Services inside of a Docker container. So in my last video, I had this ASP.NET 5 service using which I created a Docker image and then I uploaded the Docker image in ECR or Elastic Container Registry and I created it inside of this microservice test repository. In today's video, I am going to create a ECS cluster or Elastic Container Services cluster, which is nothing but a Docker orchestration engine provided by AWS and it is fully managed. And using ECS, I'll create a cluster. Inside of the cluster, I'll create a service which will point to the Docker image. And then finally, I'll create an Elastic Load Balancer which will point to the EC2 instance which is running the cluster. And then we can access the service through the URL of the Load Balancer. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create and set up the Load Balancer. But before I do the Load Balancer, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a target group. Target Target group is something as the name suggests it's a target group which is what the elastic load balancer points to so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a target group and I'm going to keep basic configuration and for the target group name I'm going to say microservice target group and I'm going to keep everything as normal HTTP port 80 and protocol everything will be default and for the health check I'm going to provide the weather forecast URL health check is the endpoint which the elastic load balancer uses to see if the service is healthy or not in this case I'm going to give the weather forecast URL and I'm not going to provide any advanced settings but this is basically saying what is the healthy threshold unhealthy threshold the timeout and interval so every 30 seconds it's going to perform a health check and it will be accepting status code of 200 and then finally as any other thing we have the tags I'm going to keep it empty and then I'm just going to go ahead and create the target group. Once the target group is created, I'm going to go into the load balancer. And then here I'm going to create a new load balancer. I'm going to create an application load balancer, which is HTTP and HTTPS. And I'm going to give a name here. microservice ALB. I'm going to keep everything as standard and for VPC I'm going to go ahead and select all the three availability zone. You have to select at least two availability zone. I'm going to go ahead and select all the three and then configure setting. I'm not going to do anything here. It is saying that I'm using HTTP. I should use HTTPS protocol. I'm just going to ignore that. It's not important for this demo and for security group I'm going to use the existing security group and then finally for target group I'm going to select the existing target group which I created as you have seen that we could have created a new target group from here itself but I prefer creating target group separately and now register targets and then finally just create the load balancer so the load balancer is now created successfully now I'm going to go to the EC2 and create a cluster so I'm going to create a new cluster and here I'm going to create for the cluster I'm going to use EC2 Linux as my box where I'm going to have my services running and here I'm going to give a cluster name microservice cluster and I'm going to keep everything same here I'm going to select t2 micro because that is the box which is free so if I go here and I click on launch instance and if I select Linux you can see here t2 micro is free tier eligible that's why I'm going to select here t2 micro and number of instances one and here I'm going to select the existing VPC and for the subnet I'm going to just go ahead and select all the three subnets that are there and then security group I'm going to select the default security group and that's about it 
And here, if you want to get container level information like CPU, memory usage and things like that, you can enable container inside. If you enable this, it's going to log everything into the CloudWatch and you can create a dashboard out of it. Now for this video, I'm not going to do it and I'm going to create. And now it's going to take some time to create the box itself. So we'll have to wait a little bit. As we can see, the stack is now created. Now we can click on view cluster. And now if I go to EC2, I can see one instance is up and it's been running T2 micro. Before I create the service, I'm going to go ahead and create a new task definition. And I'm going to select EC2 for the task. And I'm going to give a name for the task. And here for the role, I'm not going to create any new role or select anything because this service does not use any AWS feature. But if your service is using an AWS feature, you can create an IAM role and attach that role to it. The network mode I'm going to keep as default because if we select default for Linux, it will use the bridge networking and that is what we need to use. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a container here. And for the container name, microservice container and this is the image URL which is the ECR URL so I'm going to go here and I'm going to copy the URL for the ECR and I'm going to put it here and for memory I'm going to give a hard limit of 200 and then finally for the environment variable I'm going to pick up ASP.NET Core underscore environment as environment variable and the value for that is development so I'm going to paste that and I'm going to add it. And finally, I'm going to go ahead and create the task definition. Now the task definition is created and we can see that it has created everything. Now one thing I had to do in the task definition is provide the container port mapping, which I missed. So I'm going to create a new revision. And here I'm going to add mapping port. 80 maps to 80 and 443 maps to 443 going to update and if I click here you can see these are there and I'm going to so a new revision is created now I'm going to go back to cluster and here I'm going to create a new service I'm going to select EC2 and the target group is automatically selected as the microservice target group the latest version is 2 service name is and I'm going to give the number of tasks as 1 and I'm going to go here I'm going to keep everything as default. I'm not using any blue green deployment, just default rollout. And there are different options you can use. You can go through each one of them, but I'm just going to keep the default. In the next step, I'm going to select application load balancer because this is a service and I'm going to select the existing application load balancer and I'm going to add the port HTTP as a listener. And the target group, I'm going to select the target group that I have. And that's about it. And now I'm going to go into next step, next, and then finally create the service. Now, as you can see, the service has been created. Now we can see both the tasks are over. We can click on view service. If we go to the view service, we can see the service task is pending. We can go to the events to see what is going on here. So here it shows that one service has started and registered one service to the target group. And then finally, it will come to the steady state if it has worked as expected. And we can see here one task is running. This is the detail. And now we can see that the service has reached steady state. Now if we go back to the EC2 and click on the load balancer, go to our load balancer. And if we look into the target group, we select the target group, we can see the target group is healthy. That means it is working. The health check has passed. Now if we go to load balancer, load balancer has a default DNS. I'm going to click this DNS and I'm going to open it up here. And I'm going to say after the weather forecast. So we do weather forecast and we run. And here we are going to see the data for the weather forecast coming back from the ALB URL as expected. As you can see, it took few minutes to start with fast creating a target group and we can see the target group is healthy one task is running and then we created a load balancer from the target group and then finally we went into ECS in the ECS first we created a cluster 
After creating the cluster, we created a task definition. We went ahead in the task definition and we provided a container. In container, we configured the port 80 and 443 and provided the environment variable. And then we came back to the cluster and created a new service. And then we saw that the service started up and running. And within few minutes, we can go ahead and hit the ALB URL with the weather forecast and we can see the weather forecast up and running. Now one more thing to consider here is that if you have your own DNS, you can also configure the DNS through Route 53. Now I don't have any DNS, but if you have a DNS, you can create a hosted DNS or register your domain. And then after you do that, you can associate your domain to point to the ALB. And then instead of using this AWS provided domain, you can use your domain name and your API endpoint to access your service. So that's all I wanted to cover for today. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are new to my channel, and if you think you are getting value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.